China is single-handedly bringing open source models to the frontier. We now have a brand new model from ZAI called GLM 4.5 that is on par with the best closed source models at reasoning, coding, and agentic capabilities. Before I tell you more about the model, let me show you some demos. This is the second model ever to successfully simulate a Rubik's Cube. To be fair, I had to go back and forth a couple times with it. There was just a minor problem, and now check this out. So here's the Rubik's Cube. All the sides look accurate. I can move it in space, and it outputs the move history. I can move everything one by one if I want, or I just click scramble, and there you go. Look at that, a fully simulated Rubik's Cube that actually looks really good. But is it gonna be able to solve it? Let's find out. Here it goes, solving cube. Looks like it's working, but we'll see. There it is, perfectly solved, and it outputs the move history, so you can actually see and verify what's going on. All right, now let's try a five by five cube. Let's scramble it. And look at that. Seems like it's working perfectly. Okay, scrambled. I'd say that is sufficiently scrambled, and now let's solve it. There we go. Perfectly solved. Let's try one more, a 10 by 10. There it is, scramble. Okay, so there it is, scrambled, and let's solve it. There it goes. So I don't think it was completely scrambled. It was decently scrambled. Yeah, it definitely could be much more scrambled. Let's actually add a feature for number of scrambles. So add a feature so I can dictate the number of scrambles. Let's come back to this when it's done. And next, the Tower of Hanoi puzzle. If you remember the paper out of Apple basically claiming that these models aren't able to solve puzzles in their chain of thought, well, it did. So the prompt is you are an advanced reasoning model tasked with solving the four disc Tower of Annoy puzzle using pure thought. That is the important part. So deeply analyze the recursive structure of the problem, breaking it down. And then when it's fully solved in the chain of thought, create a visualization showing off the movements. So here are the actual moves, 15 of them in the chain of thought. This is not solved by code, which would be much easier. And then we have the puzzle simulated with code. Let's give it a try. Start solution. So you can see here it's displaying each move and it's visualizing each move as well. And there we go, puzzle solved. Now, I'm gonna give it something a little harder. So do this, but for a 10 plate version, make the visualization speed 10x faster. So I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. All right, next, create an interactive Lego building simulation using 3JS contained in a single HTML file. And let's take a look. So we have the first flat plane Lego right here and Let's add a two by three blue Lego. Okay, that looks good, although obviously it's not matching perfectly onto the bottom plate, but we can also click on top and it continues to build accurately one on top of the other. Let's add a one by one green and okay. So we had a little error right there, but overall I'd say this is pretty darn good. None of the models have really gotten this right perfectly. So this is pretty darn good. And probably my favorite, a 3D visualization of our solar system full of different settings we can adjust as well as tool tips so that we can learn about our solar system. Check this out. So we can rotate it just like so. We have each of the planets. There's Earth, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, we can see their orbit path right there. It's kind of hard to see, but it is there. It's this little gray line right there. You can see it is actually moving. And the prompt for that is build an accurate 3D visualization of the solar system with lots of sliders for settings and tool tips for everything so I can learn from it. And it did it, but it just said loading indefinitely. And all I said was it's stuck on loading the solar system. And I see the issue. Let me fix it for you. So this is all done within canvas mode within ZAI's chat interface. So I'm not using any local IDEs here. So if we hover over, we can see right there, there's Venus, distance from sun, orbital period, day length. Very, very cool. I absolutely love this. And we can slow down the simulation. We can speed it up. We can show the orbits or not. It's kind of hard to see that, but it does actually make these little lines disappear. We can show labels or not. We can show the stars or not, change the planet size. We can also change the distance scale, change the ambient light, and we can change the sun's light, just like that. And there we go. 
beautiful. And by the way, if you want to increase your AI knowledge, let me pause for a second and tell you about today's sponsor, HubSpot. If you've ever had something that you knew could be solved by AI, but just didn't know how to go about doing it, I've been in the same boat. That's why I recommend HubSpot's free AI decoded guide. It is a detailed pocket guide all about AI from models to prompts to tools. The link is down below in the description, completely free to download right now. So things like what's the best model for creative writing? How can I build an entire PowerPoint presentation using AI? What's the best model for coding? And then once I know all of that, what are the best prompts to use for each of these models. My favorite part is it also gives you a bunch of custom GPTs that you can use for your various use cases. So again, this resource is free. It is provided by HubSpot down in the description below. Go download the AI Decoded Guide right now. And thanks again to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. They've been a fantastic partner, so please check it out now. Back to the video. Now, let me tell you about the model. This is GLM 4.5, Reasoning, Coding, and Agentic Capabilities, another open source model out of China that is absolutely on the frontier of coding. We just got Kimi K2. We just got Quen 3. These models are insane and open source. So it comes in two models, GLM 4.5 and 4.5 Air, the larger of which is 355 billion total parameters, 32 billion active parameters, which means it's a mixture of experts model. And the air is 106 billion total parameters, 12 billion active. And they are both hybrid reasoning models, which means they can do both reasoning and non-reasoning tasks. So it offers a thinking mode for complex reasoning and tool using and non-thinking modes for instant responses. So let me show you one that shouldn't need any reasoning. What's the capital of California? Okay, it is actually thinking, although it was very fast. So it is Sacramento, that's correct. Let me give it another one to see if it needs to think on this. So tell me a story. Super simple, it should just output. Yeah, once again, it is thinking quite a bit. So I haven't actually been able to trigger the non-thinking version. Now let's look at the benchmarks. Now I believe this is an index of the benchmarks up here, but as you can see, 03 is at 65, Grok 4, 63.6, and right behind it, the open source GLM 4.5 at 63.2, above Claude 4 Opus. And also look at this, the small version, 59.8 GLM 4.5 Air. So here it is with the agentic benchmarks, Taobench, BFCLV3, and Browse Comp, and outperforms Grok 4, look at that. Here it is for Reasoning, MMLU Pro, Amy 2024, Math 500. And yeah, I think these are just indexes of these different benchmarks. So here you can see it is very performant right above Cloud 4 Opus, but it is behind DeepSeek R1, Quen 3, O3, O4 Mini, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and Grok 4. Here it is for coding all the way at the top. Claude takes the top two spots, not surprising there. Here's Tau Bench Retail, Tau Bench Airline. These are tool use benchmarks. So here we can see it in line with other frontier models. And here it is on SWE Bench compared to the model parameters. So the higher and more to the left is better because to the left means smaller, higher means a higher score on the SWE Bench verified. So Claude for Sonnet way at the top but an unknown number of parameters, probably massive. Here's Kimi K2, which just came out, seems to be almost exactly on par with GLM 4.5 in terms of quality, but it is two and a half times the size. So very, very good place to be right there. And of course they did do post-training with reinforcement learning for agentic capabilities. And reinforcement learning, post-training is table stakes at this point. All right, coming back to the Rubik's cube. Now we have a number of moves we can add. So let's go ahead and have a 10 by 10 cube. There it is. And let's scramble it for 50 moves. Let's see if it actually does that. Okay, there we go. It should be 50 moves. I'm not gonna count it, but it does look to be like a lot of moves. Now let's solve it. Okay, it looks like it is getting solved. And there it is, cube solved. Extremely impressive. Now let me show you a few other demos that they provided. Here's Flappy Bird, I can go ahead and start. Okay, and yeah, it looks very accurate. Here we go. So get through one, get through two, and I'm just using the space bar to move the Flappy Bird. Here we go. All right, so there it is. Next, 3D Maze Explorer. All right, and look at that, very accurate. 
shadows, lighting. Can't really see where the lighting's coming from, but everything looks really, really good. Next, here's a to-do board. I can move it around. I can add a task. All right, so that's cool. Here's a visualization, SVG animation, evolution of large language models. Great. Ah, of course, the Python simulation of nested spinning hexagons. And this looks fantastic. And here's a Pokedex it put together. So I can click into any of them. I can see all of their stats. It has pictures of them. Blastoise. Very cool. All right. So finally, let's come back to the Tower of Hanoi using 10 discs this time. But interestingly enough, it didn't actually list out each move in its chain of thought. Instead, it listed out the algorithm to do it or groups of steps. So check this out. Level one, 10 discs. Move nine discs from A to B using C. Move disc 10 from A to C, move nine discs from B to C using A, and so on. Here's level two, level three, and it actually calculates the total moves. Let's give it a try. Start solution. There it goes. Sure looks like it's working to me. All right, let me skip ahead to the end now. Okay, there it is. Fully solved, each move, 10 moves per second, 81 seconds total, 1,023 moves, so impressive. We are finally in a world in which open source models have effectively caught up with closed source models. Now, of course, GPT-5 is coming, so that might just be leaps and bounds ahead of everything else. But for now, we have multiple open source models that are on the frontier. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.